Welcome back to A Moment in History. I'm Seth Udinsky. Church historians tend to split the 2,000 years of Christian history into three categories, ancient, medieval, and modern. Now, for many Protestants, we tend to celebrate heroes of the ancient church, such as the Apostles or Augustine or Athanasius. And then we also jump to the modern heroes, such as John Bunyan or Charles Spurgeon or C.S. Lewis. But we often erroneously skip over the medieval church, which, to be fair, was a dark period of church history that the light of the gospel thankfully broke back through with the reformation of the 16th century. But still, there were some titans in the medieval church as well, and one of them was a 13th century Italian Dominican friar who would be remembered as the preeminent Christian thinker of the Dark Ages, St. Thomas Aquinas. Born in a castle to a noble family in the Italian medieval states in 1225, Aquinas rejected his aristocracy in his youth and developed a keen interest in the things of God. He lived in an Italian abbey as a boy, and as a very young man, he entered the Dominican monastery in Naples in 1244, which began a lifetime of theological study and philosophy. Now, in a time period that is sometimes unfairly heavily remembered for a lack of critical thinkers, Thomas Aquinas was a giant. He was a devout Christian, heavily immersed in medieval Catholic thought, but he was also a lover of the classics, and he was perhaps most heavily influenced by the teachings of the Greek philosopher Aristotle. And in a brilliant way, Thomas was able to find connections with Aristotelian philosophy to explain Christian theology. Now, at its best, Thomas's philosophy, which came to be known as Thomism after Thomas, seeks to explain the existence of God through reason and common sense. So, for example, the fact that the universe exists in the first place in an orderly way where our bodies function well and the tides move back and forth and the heavenly bodies travel properly in their orbit would not be possible without the divine creation from a God who is all-powerful to sustain, all-knowing to uphold it, and all-good to keep it for his good pleasure. Now, in an age where, again, historians tend to believe that Christians were basically barbarians and just hyper-focused on bloodshed and distracted with papal squabbles and fairies and witches, Thomas's deep thinking really shatters this notion. Now, of course, Thomas is also rather a controversial figure. He propagated one of the most confusing doctrines of medieval Catholicism, and that's, of course, the doctrine of transubstantiation, where it is believed that the body and blood of Jesus Christ miraculously appears in the elements of the Lord's Supper. It was this doctrine, among others, of course, that Luther and the Reformers would do battle against during the 16th century Protestant Reformation. Now, despite all of this, Thomas remains a monumental figure in Christian history and would take the cake as the church's most important medieval theologian. He died in the year 1274 AD, remembered as Dr. Angelicus, and was elevated for sainthood in the Catholic Church less than 50 years after his death. Thanks so much for joining me once again for A Moment in History.